Today, we're going to talk about my perspective on 9-11. Everybody probably remembers where they were when 9-11 happened. Because it was the day... Well, how, would, how are they going to talk about it in 100 years? They're going to talk about George Bush. They're going to talk about George Bush and how... They're going to psychoanalyze George Bush and the American people for thousands of years to come all about the turn of the millennium. Now the turn of the millennium is completely insignificant except that we like to make it significant. We decide, okay, the big numbers are changing and it somehow means something. Well, it doesn't really. In um, some countries I think it's 5,166 or is it 99? I can always get my sixes and nine mixed up, which is another point. 666 is not the number of the beast, it is point nine 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 nine. Everything is the beast. We'll get to George. Almost everybody talks into their bloody electric telephones, but not so many people talk into their camera. Anyhow. <laughs> Alright, let's focus on my memories of George Bush. When I was a little boy, no, when I was back, back when George Bush came along, I can remember talking to a friend of mine, we quite often talk about science fiction because we're both interested in science fiction, and we were talking about George Bush and how science fiction he was, and we went on to um, be astounded when he got elected. He didn't get elected. It was a coup. It was so obviously a military coup that we looked at each other and said, uh, is that America? The home of the brave? The land of the free? Right. There is no such thing as, as a bird he told me on the way down here, civil liberty. You people are slaves. Did you know that? You Americans have been made into slaves. And it's a sad, sad situation. And I'm going to try to help you. And there's lots of other people trying to help you. To wake up. Anyway, shortly after the coup, I was in a company that fell apart, and that was the internet dot com loser nonsense. And ended up in another company that wasn't my company, <coughs> somebody else's company, one of those big companies. And they were doing a lot of JavaScript and whatnot, which was beyond me. But uh, they needed some content people, and I was one of them for about half a year. Well, not even a half a year. But anyway, it was a good place to learn a lot of stuff. And one of the st things I learned was the power of the media. I already was suspected the power of the internet and the rest of the media. But I was sitting there in the office with uh, a few people. I think there's like six or eight offices all around together in one place. Uh, um, most of the people were actually quite fun to work with, and the boss wasn't even really that big of an asshole. The super overboss was a fucking prick, but um, that's normal. The more money you get, the more you are like a prick. It's not always the case, but mostly it is the case that if you're the boss, you're the prick. Which will get us very shortly to the whole story about Moses and... What was the other guy's name? Bill. No, George. George Bush. Um... Anyhow, we were sitting there in the office, and some guy walks in and says, a plane flew into the twin, one of the Twin Towers. And so we looked at him. He turned around and went back to his office. I think that was, Norman was his name. And we were, nobody reacted. We just kept on working. And then he came back five minutes later and said, another plane flew into the other Twin Tower. And so we all kind of stopped and thought, well, the chances of that is about 1 in 76 billion. So, it must be some kind of an attack. My first reaction was CIA. Now, why did I think of the CIA? I'll tell you. The biggest reason was that we were told that it was going to happen. The Financial Times were saying, USA needs to go to war again to help relieve what it's always the same case the Hitler did the same thing the, the country was falling apart and as the last desperate effort to keep the country from falling apart 
you go and attack other countries so you can plunder. And that is exactly what they did. They bombed the CN Towers so they could go over and bomb Afghanistan and take away their drugs, their heroin, or is it heroin? Or, yeah, heroin. Opium. Poppies. Rather right? the poppies. You make it into a few things. Anyhow, that's a big money thing, and the Americans needed some more money, money for their weapons. Anyhow, let's get back to sitting there in the office and thinking it was the CIA. Well, who else would do it? Who else? And I've thought about this for a long time, because actually, if if it's a gut instinct, you almost have to be careful to, to say anything about it. I went around telling everybody, no, it was definitely an inside job. It's so obvious. They want to scare their own people to justify going to war. What I didn't realize is they wanted to justify taking away the silver, civil liberties of the whole bloody country. They bomb their own twin towers, and this is proven now, it's not a joke anymore. They blow up their own twin towers so that they can take away the civil liberties of the country that is supposed to be the land of the home of the brand, the brave and the free or whatever the fuck they're supposed to be called and they are a model citizen, model picture of dictatorship the American empire has become another brutally bloody warmongering dictatorship 